In this video lecture, we're going to discuss intermolecular forces. And uh, I'm going to explain uh, how many types of intermolecular forces there exist between molecules. Now, the first thing that you need to know about intermolecular forces is that it's a force of attraction between simple molecules only. So there is a force of attraction. Generally, it's, it's a very weak force of attraction. And uh, that force of attraction exists between simple molecules. So, for example, you have the CO2 molecule. It might be attracting this water molecule this water molecule would be attracting this hcl molecule these two molecules might be attracting each other so there would be very weak forces of attraction between these molecules and these forces of attraction are called intermolecular forces remember that within the molecule there exist bonds bonds are relatively stronger so this oxygen and hydrogen and this oxygen and hydrogen they're bonded together there is a very strong bond that requires a lot of energy to break but these molecules would be attracting other molecules by this, sim by this very weak uh, force of attraction called intermolecular forces. One very important point that needs to be understood about intermolecular forces is that intermolecular forces are only present between molecules. They are absent in giant structures. And the reason is that intermolecular forces are always between two things. Now, if you have a giant covalent structure, in a giant covalent structure, all the atoms are bonded to each other. For example, in graphite, all the atoms of carbon are bonded to each other. Similarly, in diamond, all the atoms of carbon are bonded to each other. So, so there are no f other forces of attraction. They're basically bonds. Every atom is bonded to another atom. The same is true for giant ionic lattices. If you have a giant ionic lattice, then there's a network of positive and negative ions and they're all bonded to each other. They're all, they're all forming strong ionic bonds. A positive ion is attracting a negative ion, a negative ion is attracting another positive ion and so on and so forth. So they're all attracted to each other. So there is no room for intermolecular forces. So always remember intermolecular forces are present between two completely separate things. Uh, the same is true for giant metallic lattice. In a giant metallic lattice, you have... Uh, positive metal ions in a sea of free moving delocalized electrons. So the force of attraction that's uh, present over here is uh, that the electrons, the negative electrons are acting as a glue, which are keeping all the positive ions together. Now, the same is true for this one as well. Uh, the giant metallic lattice is one huge structure. So there are no gaps, there are no separate things in which you, you intermolecular forces could exist. So when you talk about intermolecular forces, you always refer to simple molecules. They only apply to simple molecules, like the ones we see over here. For example, you have a molecule of CO2. So it's a, it's a tiny molecule of CO2. You have a molecule of H2O. So that's also a tiny, it, it has one oxygen atom and one uh, and two hydrogen atoms. So intermolecular forces only uh, uh, the term and the concept applies to simple molecules and we're going to discuss how simple molecules would be attracting each other whether they're attracting each other strongly or whether they're attracting each other weakly. Now we're going to discuss the properties that depend on intermolecular forces. Now intermolecular forces are the forces that are between molecules so the first property that depends on intermolecular forces are the melting and boiling points. Now what do we mean by the term melting and boiling points? Uh, if uh, you have uh, a molecule uh, and that substance exists in gases, that would suggest uh, that the particles have very weak intermolecular forces. They're not attracting each other very strongly, so there are gaps between them and the particles can move freely in all directions. So, so if the intermolecular forces are weak, so let's uh, show those intermolecular forces with these dotted lines, that would suggest that the particle is most likely going to be in gaseous state and it would have low melting and boiling point. So, so gas molecules have weak intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces. And they're going to have low melting points and boiling points. So you, they're going to have low melting and boiling points. Particles would be far apart. They would not be attracting each other very strongly and they would be able to move freely in all directions Meanwhile on the other hand you have solids and solids the intermolecular forces Or the force of attraction between particles. It's going to be very very strong Which is why they're all tightly held together and they're all attracting each other and they cannot move around They can only vibrate by the fixed position. So so when you talk about solids, solids have have strong intermolecular forces and 
they have strong intermolecular forces and they're going to have high melting and boiling points so melting points and boiling points so that's uh, for solid so I can give you an example uh, liquid state is the middle state in liquid state you have particles that are attracting each other uh, strongly but the force of attraction is not very strong so the particles can move and slip and slide over the, past each other but they cannot move freely in all directions they are not major gaps they are loosely held together but unlike gases the force of attraction is still considerably stronger so the particles are not uh, moving around freely in all directions they can only slip and slide past each other so th that's uh, liquid state so the first thing that depends on, on intermolecular forces is the state of the particle or the substance whether it's going to be a gas or a liquid or a solid and if it's a gas then it's it's going to have low melting and boiling points if it's a if it's a solid it's going to have high melting and boiling points the next property that depends on intermolecular forces are the solubility of substances so when you mix substances uh, different substances molecules would have different strength of intermolecular forces now the rule is that if the substances have similar intermolecular forces uh, and we're talking about the strength of the intermolecular forces so if they attract each other in in the same way if the force of attraction between them is is similar then they're going to mix easily so for example i've drawn this diagram over here you have red molecules and you have blue molecules now if the blue and the red molecules attract each other in a similar manner in with the same force of attraction so for example the red molecules are attracting the blue ones the blue ones are attracting the red ones the red ones are attracted to other red molecules as well so they are all attracting each other in exactly the same way so if the intermolecular forces between the particles is similar they have the same they are attracting each other with the same force of attraction then if you mix them they are going to remain mixed because they are going to attract each other the intermolecular forces are going to attract each other and they are going to remain mixed so it's going to be very easy uh, to dissolve or mix substances that have similar intermolecular forces as an example you have uh, uh, ammonia mixing with water now NH3 and water have similar intermolecular forces which is why they mix uh, similarly other examples could include uh, you can have um, CCL4 which is an or organic solvent and that mixes in bromine because they have similar intermolecular forces so if particles attract each other with in, in exactly the same way if they attract each other so they're going to mix and they're going to mix easily and they're going to dissolve uh, easily the next point about dissolving substances that if you have substances and they have very different intermolecular forces uh, the strength of intermolecular forces is different one molecule has very strong intermolecular forces and the other one has very weak intermolecular forces so these type of substances they would generally don't mix easily and they would usually form separate layers so what I mean by that is I have this container over here and it has uh, I'm trying to mix two molecules uh, the blue ones and the red ones now for example the red molecules attract each other very strongly which means the red molecules would be attracting each other strongly and they would try to be as close to each other as possible so so these red molecules are trying to attract each other these red molecules over here they are attracting each other similarly the red molecules over here are trying to attract each other so they're trying to attract each other very strongly and they would try to be as close to each other as possible so what they would do is they're going to push these blue molecules out of the way so these blue molecules are going to be pushed out of the way and the red molecules would start sticking to each other because they're attracting each other very strongly and this is uh, what's going to happen this is how the container would look all the red molecules would get together because they are attracting each other very strongly and the blue molecules would be pushed out of the way so there would be strong forces of attraction between the red molecules and they're going to form a separate layer they're all going to stick together come together strongly attracting each other and they're going to stick together and form a separate layer and the blue molecules would be pushed out of the way so this is the reason why uh, if two molecules have totally different intermolecular forces and the strength of intermolecular forces is different one molecule has strong intermolecular forces and the other one has weak intermolecular forces then they're not going to mix together and they're going to form separate layers 
Another property that depends on the strength of intermolecular forces is called uh, surface tension of liquids. Uh, so surface tension is if you've seen a, a glass of water, you would you would notice that the that the surface uh, it's very hard to actually get through the surface of water. There is some uh, tension, there's some force that is keeping all the molecules together. So for example, there's this pen on top of the surface, it's floating on the surface. This is one of the reasons why things tend to float on the, if they're not heavy enough, they tend to float on the surface of water because the surface of water, all the molecules are sticking together and they're not letting the, uh, the object pass through. And this is one of the reasons why insects, uh, some of the insects, light insects can actually crawl on water as well. So the idea behind uh, surface tension is, so for example, you have these, uh, these molecules of water and water molecules are attracting each other and there they, they are strong intermolecular forces between them. So at the surface, since all the molecules are attracting each other, so uh, if some object tries to, uh, uh, if you throw some object on the surface of water, what is going to happen is that if the force is not strong enough so uh, to get rid of these intermolecular forces and break these intermolecular forces then that object would not be able to get through and into the water so you might have noticed uh, throwing pebbles sideways so if you if you throw pebbles uh, sideways on water they're going to what's going to happen is they're going to come and hit the water and they're going to bounce over it uh, the reason is the force wasn't strong enough to actually break the intermolecular forces that are present on the surface. The water molecules on the surface are attracting each other strongly. So the pebble would come and hit the surface and bounce back. So uh, most liquids have some sort of surface tension and this surface tension is because molecules are attracting each other and there's some, some weak or strong intermolecular forces between the molecules. The fourth property that we're going to discuss that depends on intermolecular forces is viscosity. And the term viscosity means the state of being thick, semi-fluid or sticky. So some substances are very thick. So I have this example in front of you and this is honey. And you probably have experienced what honey feels like and what's the texture of honey in real life. Now honey is very, very viscous. It's very sticky. It doesn't flow easily if you try to... Uh, pour off some of the honey it's going to take a very long time because the uh, uh, honey particles are going to be attracting each other very strongly they have very strong intermolecular forces which is why it's very very sticky all the particles are glued together they are holding each other strongly compare this with water water has very low viscosity it flows very very easily so what that would suggest is compared to honey water has weaker intermolecular forces so the particles of water can easily uh, slip and slide and move past each other whereas in honey the particles are attracting each other strongly so they cannot slip and slide or move past each other very easily they're all holding each other strongly so when you try to pour off some honey it's going to take a very long time because all the particles are sticking to each other they're all strongly attracting each other they all have strong intermolecular forces whereas in water if you pour off water the molecules are can easily slide past each other and they can move around so so they have comparatively weaker intermolecular forces. So the strength of intermolecular forces um, would, uh, viscosity depends on the strength of intermolecular forces. If there are more intermolecular forces, that would mean the substance is very viscous. It would not flow easily. And if they are weaker intermolecular forces, then the substance is going to flow very, very easily. Another property that depends on the intermolecular forces uh, is wave of pressure of a liquid. Uh, vapor pressure, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I'm just going to explain to you. Vapor pressure is uh, exerted by the vapor of a substance, the gaseous phase of a substance when it's in equilibrium with its liquid phase. What that means is, normally if you have a liquid, particles would tend to evaporate when they gain enough energy. They overcome the intermolecular forces and they evaporate and they leave the container. But if uh, the container is sealed, that would mean that if the particles are evaporating, so if the particles are evaporating, uh, the particles are not going anywhere because the container is sealed. So the particles are roaming around and there are chances that the particles would lose energy and get converted back into, into liquid state back again. So eventually an equilibrium would be reached. The amount of particles evaporating and the amount of particles condensing back would become equal. So you, you would have an equilibrium. So f for example, this is uh, water we are talking about. So, so an equilibrium would be reached between the liquid and the gaseous 
phase and once the rate of forward and the rate of backward reaction, once the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation, they become equal, that would mean that the amount of particles in the vapor state, they would remain constant. And these particles would exert a pressure, so there would be, there would be some vapor pressure, a constant vapor pressure that would be exerted by the particles that are in gaseous state. So that would be called vapor pressure. Now we're going to compare two liquids. So I have a liquid in which the intermolecular forces are stronger. So there would be less evaporation taking place because the particles are attracting each other very strongly. So they're going to tend to remain in liquid state or they would need more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces and change into vapor state. So fewer gaseous molecules would be formed and uh, at equilibrium, there would be lesser uh, vapor pressure because you have lesser molecules, lesser molecules colliding with the walls of the container that would mean they would exert a lesser pressure. So, so if the if the intermolecular forces are greater, so if the intermolecular forces are greater, larger intermolecular forces, molecular forces. So if you have larger intermolecular forces, there would be less vapor produced and the vapor pressure would be lesser. On the other hand, if the liquid evaporates very easily, there are very weak intermolecular forces and the, and the liquid molecules tend to overcome those uh, intermolecular forces and change into gaseous vapors, more vapor would be formed at equilibrium and if more vapor is formed, uh, the vapor pressure is going to be greater. So, so uh, this is the case where you have weak intermolecular forces. So weak intermolecular forces, uh, the vapor, the liquid uh, would have a greater vapor pressure and if you have larger intermolecular forces, the liquid is going to have a lower vapor pressure.